everybody. Thanks for joining today. Uh, looks like we got a, a pretty good crew. Uh, should be probably closer to the 45 minute range as far as presentations are concerned today. There's, there's a lot to cover with Greece, as you, you might imagine. Um, I'm going to probably mispronounce the majority of, of the words in this presentation, so you'll have to bear with me uh, just because I don't speak Greek. Uh, but we're going to try and we'll, we'll power through. We're going to take a look at, uh, we'll start by looking at some maps, uh, familiarize ourselves with the different regions uh, of Greece. And then we'll get a little bit more in depth into, uh, well, of course, history, climate, geography. Uh, and then we'll get more granular with each one of those regions um, before we get to some producer discussion. We'll start here uh, with some basic uh General maps. The the wine following maps are always fantastic. I think um, they're a little bit small in here, so I'm gonna try and zoom in real quick. Uh, but you can see here in northern Greece, um, Thrace to the northeast, Macedonia and Epirus, and then sort of central Greece, Thessaly. <clears throat> We're gonna get to Peloponnese um, here in just a second. You can see the Ionian Islands here to the west, and then the Aegean Islands um, sort of south and east of mainland. Uh, of course, we're going to talk about some of the important PDOs. You can see a couple of them highlighted on the following map, including Alisa and uh, Amatheo and Zipsa, uh, Rapsani in central Greece, down here in Nemea and Manitinia. And then um, off into the islands, you can see, of course, probably some of my favorite uh, in Santorini. There's another really good map that uh, New Wines of Greece puts out, and we'll try to zoom in on that. It's got all of your PDOs, uh, which is pretty cool. It's kind of difficult to read on its own, but we'll, we'll pull it up uh, individually as we start to look at each one of these regions um, so you can get a feel for where each of these PDOs actually sits. Cool. So we start with just basic history of Greece. And, and there have been dozens of different people that have ruled Greece throughout history. Uh, the Minoan civilization from 3000 BCE up to 17th BCE, uh, when the eruption of Santorini occurred. Uh, the Mycenaean of Peloponnese uh, up to 1100 BCE. The Homeric period from 8th BCE driven by Sparta and Athens. Uh, Macedonia takes power in the 4th century BCE. This is Alexander the Great. And this is the Macedonia, not the subregion, but the area uh, northwest of the country, northwest of Greece. The Hellenic Age from 323 BCE to the Roman occupation in 146. Then you get the Christian Byzantines, uh, which were overtaken by the Muslim Ottomans uh, up until about 1453. And this is where we start to see uh, some changes. Uh, the Venetians controlled much of the Ionian and Aegean islands between the 12th and 17th century. Uh, and then finally, Greece wins independence from Turkey in 1832 and later joins the EU in 1981. Uh, viticulture really begins on the island of Crete with the Minoans and then sort of spreads to Santorini. Uh, the Byzantine era is marked by modernization, wooden barrels, sweet wines from dry grapes, and general end to the looting of wines. Uh, Venetian control imposed favorable trade for them, lessened the value of Greek wine, dealing it a blow until the Ottoman Empire really took over. By the time the Greece had won uh, their freedom from the Turkish, the wine industry had really dwindled and the Turkish burned many of their vineyards on the way back home. So raisins sort of became a cash crop, particularly during phylloxera in France, when people were using raisins to produce wine. The fall of raisins was a direct contributor to Greece's declaration of bankruptcy in 1893. Uh, shortly thereafter, phylloxera arrives in 1898, though it doesn't hit Crete until really the 1970s, and there's even some Asian islands uh, that it still has not affected. Uh, the Balkan Wars, World War I, the Greek Civil War, and World War II led the industry really into bulk production for a long time. Um, Co-ops kind of became the most important producers, which were first developed on Samos in 1934. Uh, the first wine school opens in Athens in the 1980s. Uh, so just sort of uh, a list of when the islands joined. The Ionian Islands joined in 1864, um, Thessaly in 1881. Uh, 1913 and 14, you added Epirus in the northwest and Macedonia in north central, Crete and some of the Asian islands, uh, Thrace in 1920, and then the Dodecanese islands were added in 1947 to form what we know today as Greece. The climate is largely Mediterranean. Uh, though as you get to the northwestern area, Epirus and the western Macedonia, you get far more continental. 
Uh, the rains in the north and west are the most abundant. Um, occasionally, you'll get what's known as a melteni, which is a year of bad weather, quote unquote, is how it translates. It's wind routinely that affects the Aegean islands, blowing very dry air from the Balkans and Turkey all the way down, it really affects uh, Santorini probably the most. And then Crete in the south uh, is affected by hot winds from Africa, uh, which is south of Crete. Uh, there's also a mountain chain that runs west-east uh, across the mainland. Greece really is uh, one of the most mountainous wine countries out there. It's like 70% covered by mountains. Um, so that natural barricade creates most of the vineyards, quality vineyard sites at least, are planted north of this mountain chain. And we'll take a look at sort of where those are too. As I mentioned, 70% of Greece covered by mountains. It's the third most mountainous country in the EU behind Switzerland and Austria. Uh, the Pindos is the main range and it forms a spine of the country to the western portion. Um, it's the southernmost extension of the Central Alps. And then in the northeast, you'll find Mount Olympus cresting at around 3,000 meters. Very few lakes or rivers. A um, Couple of other uh, geography things that you might wanna know, the Corinthian Gulf separates the Peloponnese from the mainland. And then east of the Peloponnese, there's a little, another little small gulf there called Argelikos. I'm sure I, I butchered that as well. Uh, as far as soil is concerned for Greece, oceanic crust protrudes and creates mountains, right? Limestone and low fertility are pretty common. Uh, Santorini has probably one of the most important ones to understand, almost entirely volcanic. It is a white volcanic uh, soil called Aspa. Uh, in central Greece, you see mostly clay. You get a lot of alluvial along the coasts, igneous in the north, and Kefalonia is known for extremely rocky soils. There's a 300 indigenous grape varieties of red and white throughout Greece. There's a ton of them, right? Uh, two thirds of the vineyards are white though, and there's really, if we distill it down, probably a dozen white grape varieties that are exceedingly important to understand. And we'll go through them alphabetically uh, and take a look at where they're grown, and sort of what their styles are. We start with Idani in the Aegean Islands, mostly in Santorini, it's likely point of origin, very drought tolerant. Uh, there in Santorini, it's blended with Sirtico and Ethiri as a dry white. And then uh, in Vinsanto, not to be confused with the Tuscan style of Vinsanto, uh, sort of as a softening agent, similar to Viandia on its own. A Sirtico, uh, again, some of my favorite wines. Uh, you can see 75% with Idani and Ethiri, and then in the Vinsanto styles, a little less uh, required, but still very impactful. Very drought tolerant, adaptable, and disease resistant, but it is prone to oxidation. Uh, the high tartaric acid keeps the wines crisp despite the super hot conditions. And so, and a lesser component, excuse me, component in the PDOs to blends of Rhodes, Slopes Meloton, and Candia. A theory, uh, also likely indigenous to Santorini as well, drought resistant. Uh, you'll find it in other PDOs of Rhodes and Slopes of Meloton in addition to Santorini. Uh, Dabina, we know it in Epirus in the northwestern portion in, in the Zitsa PDO at super high elevation for sparkling and steel wines. Uh, again, drought sensitive, but sees an abundance of rainfall there. Uh, it tends to be pretty light and refreshing, low alcohol and, uh, and high, excuse me, high acid. Malagusia, uh, Porto Caris really resurrected the grape in the 1980s from extinction. You find it in Peloponnese, Thrace, and Macedonia. Rhodes for still and sparkling for the PDO. Uh, it's disease sensitive, likely causing uh, why it was abandoned. Bosco Filaro, this is a pink skin variant uh, from Peloponnese in the Ionian Islands, uh, mainly for Mantinia PDO for dry and sparkling wines. It's a late ripener causing you know, real concern annually as to whether or not it's gonna ripen. Several clones exist due to mutation and high bouquet, very floral and citric. Uh, Muscat Blanc may have originated in Greece, possibly the oldest vinifera still to date. Muscat Blanc, Petit Grand, and Alexandria. Uh, moderate plus yields disease, very disease prone. Uh, it's rich in terpenes. You get a lot of roses, orange water, and honey. Uh, it's the only PDO is, oh, excuse me, only PDO for dessert wines, and you'll see it under Musket of Kefalonia, Musket of Patras, Musket of Rhodes, Musket of Rio Patras, and the one that doesn't have Musket in the name, Samos. Rubola, which is not to be confused with Rubola Giala, Giala. Uh, it's important in the Ionian Islands, really best on Kefalonia, where you find Rubola of Kefalonia. 
uh, crisp, dry wines. It's Sirico's sort of little brother, uh, though it is sensitive to drought and disease. Rhoditis, the second most widely planted grape in Greece, very prevalent in central Greece, Peloponnese, Thessaly, Thrace, Macedonia. It's pink skin, it's vigorous, uh, but it produces pretty neutral whites. Uh, Patris, really, for your best expression, and the north of Peloponnese for moderate plus acid. for blending with Asturico, Archeolos, and Sabatiano. Uh, Sabatiano, as uh, we need to mention for sure, is the most planted grape in all of Greece, mainly for that Retsina production. Um, Attica and Central Greece are the largest drivers. Moderate vigor, fairly disease resistant, site selection and wine age can produce some telling results. Uh, Papazianathos in Attica produces wonderful age-worthy wines and drinks and extremely with sort of a medium acidity, up to 20% and reside, excuse me, reditis based on Pelos PDO. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about Retina production in a few minutes. Uh, Vidiano, native to Crete, produces some of the finest wines on the island, uh, comparable to Marsan, really at its best. Candy has a small blending partner for PDO dry and sweet wines. And then Villana, also native to Crete, most planted grape on the island, high yielding, susceptible to disease oxidation. Poor soils and high elevation make for pretty interesting wines, though. Uh, you'll find it as 100% varietal in the Petsa PDO of Crete. As far as reds, there's not nearly as many to think of. Um, as we mentioned, two-thirds of the land is planted to white wines, and really two-thirds of the important grapes that we need to know are white wines. There's a handful of reds, and um, we'll go through those alphabetically as well. We'll start with Azure Zitico, uh, or St. George's grape. A uh, lot of high yields, primarily, excuse me, primarily found in Attica and Central Peloponnese. Uh, it's the sole grape of the Nemea PDO and Peloponnese for uh, rosé, carbonic reds, age-worthy reds. They make dessert for wines in both Vindu Natural and Vindu Liqueur styles. Um, it's the most planted red and third overall. <clears throat> Leotico, which is indigenous to Crete as well, still in sweet. Um, often ripens before August. Um, it's named derived maybe from July. Uh, low tanning but highly floral. You'll find it in Daphne's PDO for 100% and in City Citia PDO, excuse me, with Mandelaria. So Malvasia Citia and Candia is dried and vinified as a white and a complex blend. Uh, Limnio, named after the islands of Limnos, uh, highly disease and drought resistant, <coughs> like late ripening. Light to medium wines, it can be pretty austere, high tannin and, and alcohol. Uh, this you'll find in slopes of Meloton in Macedonia with Cabernet Sauvignon and Cabernet Franc. And then you'll find it 100% in Limnos, uh, Macedonia, Thrace, and then the Mount Athos Vineyard, which we'll talk about here in just a minute. <coughs> Mandelaria, important for Greek islands, dark hued wines, uh, sort of low ABV and aromatics, high tannin and acid. Crete commonly blends it with Cotsifalia and Yatiko. Peros on the Asian islands is paired with Monobasia and finished uh, as a red. Santorini on the Asian islands, most planted red, blended with Mavrotragno. And then Rhodes PDO uh, in the Asian islands, 100% Mandelaria. Sort of an extended growing season. You get dry red, rose, uh, and, and sparkling wines. Mavrodathi. Primarily in the Ionian Islands in the western Peloponnese, you see extended oak aging for a wine sort of comparable to Tawny Port. Um, dessert wine PDOs are Mavrodaphne of Patras, Mavrodaphne of Kefalonia, or both are blended with uh, Corinthiaki. Vigorous, super thick skinned. And then Zeno Malbro, uh, which is the most important grape of northern Greece, I would say. Uh, very difficult to grow, can be aggressively herbal. But when treated properly, it can rival Pinot Noir or, or Nebbiolo. Uh, tannin and acid are naturally high. Color is light, sensitive to oxidation. Can be made into sparkling rosé, dry rosé, or dry red. You'll find it in Gumanisa with Nagoska and Macedonia. And then Repsani uh, in Thessaly. <clears throat> so we mentioned earlier uh, when we talked about Sabatiano uh, Retsina. So pine wet resin was used to seal barrels in ancient times, but with the economy bouncing back after World War II, it became sort of a, a mask for those offensive wines that were being produced. And so uh, Red Sina kind of became the standard bearer for what people expected from Greek wines. Uh, today, it's got to come from uh, 
the Aleppo pine tree. It can account for 0.15 to 1% of the final product. Uh, it may have pinned up to 15 villages in central Greece, and it's got to be made from those grapes of Savatiano or Reditis. Um, and the pink skin, which can produce a rosé called Cochinelli. Addition of the resin must occur during the first half of the fermentation, interestingly enough. There's a few other styles in Insabajmont that you might want to uh, just make yourself aware of. And they can be a bit confusing when they talk about sort of sweet wines. <clears throat> so Vin Naturella Mont Dew are sweet wines that are made only from dried grapes. Vin Dew is unfermented must that is then shocked with spirits, sort of in the Vin de liqueur style. Vin Dew Natural is partially fermented must with spirit added. Uh, the fortification with these typically occurs with supuro, which is the Greek grappa, if you will, uh, made with grape pumice. Um, Grand Cru are Greek wines that must be made in Vindu Naturel and held from a select group of vineyards, generally at a higher elevation and a lower yield. And it's only applicable to certain muscats and sweet Leotico from Crete's Daphne's PDO. Uh, and then Ouzo is the other style of grappa, one of the natural spirits of Greece. Uh, they're both made from grape pumice. Ouzo, though, is always anise flavored. It gained its PDO in 2006 and has a, a minimum ABV of 37.5. <clears throat> wine laws. Here we have some of the oldest in the world. <clears throat> There's an ancient delineation of Thrace that really was considered one of the first. Uh, 1971 though you start to get the first delimitation of appellations uh, and of course irrigation in the EU is always illegal although it's widespread. Um, the main wine laws that we want to pay attention for us though are PDOs which are protected designate, uh, designation of origin. Uh, they were overhauled in 2009. There are now 33 of them. They were formally separated into OPAP and OPE, which are sort of sweet wines and not. Um, today, all but two are indigenous varieties, and we talked about how important those are there. Uh, the two that allow for international varieties are slopes of Meloton and Mesonicola. And within PDOs, 100% of your fruit must be grown and vinified within the Appalachian. You also have TO or Topicos Enos, which is equivalent to Vinda Pie. Uh, here you may not declare vintage. And then you have PGI, or P Protected Geographic Indi uh, Indications. There's 120 in total. They're broken down into region, district, and then area, and some may be as small as a single vineyard. Um, you have to get 85% from the Appalachian to match the EU laws. 100% have to be vinified within the PGI's boundary, and they account for 63% of all the production of wine throughout Greece. A couple of important ones, we've mentioned Retsina, um, which may not be labeled as vintage. Another interesting one is Verdea, which is an oxidized white from the Zacanthos in the Ionian Islands. Okay, back to the map, and we'll zoom in again. Before we get into talking about the Greek mainland, I wanted to point out a handful of these PDOs. We start in Macedonia, um, and if you can remember uh, NAGS as your four, uh, Naosa, Amateo, Gumanisa, and Slopes of Meloton. Those are all here. And then your Slopes of Meloton is down here, um, sort of on a little peninsula. Uh, we'll talk about um, Zitza as well. And then Thessaly with Rapsani, most importantly. And then Mesnicola and Ankyolos. And then we'll get down into Peloponnese and we'll look at those a little bit closer as we do that. So really in the mainland, we start in Thrace uh, in the Northeast, borders you know, Southern Bulgaria. The Rhodopi Mountains block cool winds from the North. You get warm, wet air from the Aegean flowing in, creating significant botrytis, deep, sandy soils near the coast. Uh, as you get more inland, you find more clay and rocky in the mountains. Um, historically, it was important though, flocks are really derailed this. Um, Santali resurrected in the 90s by opening a winery and lobbying, excuse me, lobbying for several PGIs. There's no PDIs. Um, there's a few PGIs that you might want to pay attention to here. Um, you find Mavrudi and Limnio. But when compared to Macedonia, it's not nearly as important, right? Macedonia, uh, Thessaloniki on the coast is the second largest city in Greece. Uh, all in all, Zeno Mavro here is sort of the star of the show. Um, it's home to Butari and Samtali. Um, because they're commercial and not government run, the fruit quality is pretty paramount for their growers. Uh, we mentioned the Pindos range in the west. Here you'll find a handful of PDOs, right? The Nags. Amenteo uh, sits on a plateau, the coldest areas of Greece. 
Um, you'll find limestone and loam and lake effects moderate the climate. Sand is the dominant soil type. Uh, so a lot of the phylloxera cannot survive. These are 100% xenomalvro, and they produce red, rosé, and sparkling. Uh, now, Usa is more pronounced in slope here. It's along uh, Mount Vermion with more clay and less sand and considerable limestone. It's continental overall. You've got 13 crews of Nausa. Trifolos for quality at low elevation, uh, Fitia for high elevation, Ramnista for Kiriani. Uh, Butari started here in 1879. Um, and again, 100% Uh Gumanisa, gentle foothills at the, uh, at the foot of Mount Peco. Uh, deep clay loam soils and, and southern aspect. Xenomavro and Nagoska here must be co-fermented with at least 20%. You get an excess of sunshine. Um, sort of languished after phylloxera until the 70s when Butari resurrected it. Uh, slopes of Meloton, we pointed out that little peninsula uh, to the east of Macedonia, sits further east and central of three peninsulas really, uh, solely belonging to domain Porto of Caris with 450 hectares under vine, one of the largest single vineyards in Greece. Um, you get sandy loam with limestone. Many of the slopes are quite steep, necessitating terracing. Um, you get dry red from Limnio with Cabernet Franc and Sauvignon, or dry white from Assyrtico, Ethereum, and Reditis. It's granted in 1982, one of the PDOs for, excuse me, two PDOs for international varieties. And then you get that Mount Athos vineyard, which occupies the peninsula to the east, split by monk-owned uh, Milopatamos and Santali. 70 hectares between forest and the Aegean at about 220 to 250 meters with sandy clay loam. Uh, more than half the vineyards Cabernet Sauvignon with Grenache, Sirtico, Ethereum, and Limnio, uh, Chardonnay, Xenomavro, and Roditis. And for some strange region, reason, there are no women allowed in the vineyard. Uh, I don't know, it has something to do with, with the monks, I suppose. Um, and then Thessaly, uh, sort of a large fertile plain surrounded by the Pindos Mountains. Um, which include Mount Olympus to the east. Uh, here you get actual rivers and mountain runoff that provide abundant water, it's more schist and gray clay, dominant soils um, in this Mediterranean climate. You'll find Musket of Hamburg, are mostly used for Sapporo, and Roditis are sort of the most planted. Uh, Limniona plays a role in several PGIs, but really Repsani <clears throat> on the southeast slopes of Mount Olympus. Um, is the most important PDO. Quality really increases as elevation does too. You get light and rocky lows at the bottom, sandy loam in the middle, and then red tinged uh, ferric schist at the top. It's the smallest PDO, 60 producing hectare and 30 new in 2017. It's granted in 1971. Uh, Santali today identifies 95% of the fruit, though it owns no vineyards. It's the only PDO outside of Macedonia that features Xenomavro. Here it's co-fermented with Stavroto and Crisato. It's a little softer and riper here than what you'll find in northern styles. <clears throat> um, Anchiolos and Messinicola are the other PDOs. Uh, we mentioned Messinicola featuring international varietals. Uh, it's fashioned really out of Mavro Messinicola with Carignan and Syrah at a maximum of 30%. Uh, it's near Lake Placitra on gravel north of 750 meters of elevation. Anchialos is for Roditis with Savatiano, uh, for medium sweet, medium dry, oak aging is prohibited. And then <clears throat> staying on the mainland to the northwest is Epirus, uh, very remote and mountainous, over 700 meters in elevation. The one important PDO here is Zitza, <clears throat> excuse me, occupies a limestone rich plateau and a very cool continental climate influenced by the Pindos Mountains. Dabina here is the main grape for still, sparkling, and semi-sparkling wines, both dry and off-dry. All right, I think we're going to look at Peloponnese next, so we'll take a look at that more clearly. This is an interesting, <clears throat> when it comes to PDOs, there are three for dry and four for sweet. Um, you could also, if you want to look at Zekinthos just off in the Ionian Islands, this is where that Verdea comes from. Uh, but you'll find uh, all the Patris right up here, right? Maverdaphne, Muscat, Muscat of Rio Patris, and the PDO of Patris. And then as you get to the eastern side, you'll find uh, Mantinia, um, Nemea, which is probably the most important PDO, uh, and then Monobasia, Malvasia. I hope that's what we're looking at next. Yes, cool. <clears throat> Peloponnese, we mentioned the Gulf of Corinth. That separates uh, Peloponnese from the mainland. 
There's seven different peaks that approach 2,000 meters, mainly on limestone. Um, the Hellenic Trench in the south, where the African plate and the Eurasian plates meet. Um, the northeastern Peloponnese at, at Athens and Evia are active volcanic zones for sure because of that. It's Mediterranean and it's hot for a lot of this region. Uh, we mentioned the seven PDOs, three for dry and four for sweet. You can see the dries are Mantinia, Patras, and Nemea, and the sweets here are Mavra Daphne of Patras, Musket of Patras, Musket of Rhea Patras, and Monobasia Malvasia. The sweets may be late harvest, dried grapes, or fortified. In this area, rosés may not be labeled as PDO. Uh, Nemea for that 100% Azure Zidico, otherwise known as the blood of Hercules for both dry and sweet, though dry is really dominant, and sometimes you get some carbonic. Uh, Domain Scurus blended uh, Azure Zidico with Cabernet Sauvignon for Megos Enos. Um, Gaia Estate for 100% Azure, Azure Zidico in a very rich style. Uh, the zone can kind of be broken down into three distinct areas by elevation. You find your sweeter and fruity reds lower in elevation, your iconic reds sort of hit mid slope, and then your cooler climate and limestone and the higher elevations um, for more austere styles are becoming uh, more common today. Uh, Nemea also has crews showing up on the labels. Kutsi would be the most famous, produced by Gaia, and that's right at 650 meters which sits in that sort of range for the iconic reds. So it's interesting to see here that mid-slope is pretty important in Nemea too. We find that in other regions of the world. Uh, the Arcadia district in the center of Peloponnese is the coolest region, mostly white grapes. Here's where you'll find Mantinia, um, 750 meters in elevation, surrounded by high mountains. Winter snows are very common and ripeness is certainly not a given. Um, you must produce 85% Moscophilero, but most are 100%. You'll find still dry, sparkling, um, tank or traditional, and they can be dry to sweet. <clears throat> the Achaia district in the north and west of, of Corinth has dramatic mountains with three massive peaks cutting off the south. Uh, the steepest slopes facing north to the Corinthian Gulf. And you got warm climate, high elevation, and cooling influence from the Gulf. It's home to the Patras and all four of those PDOs associated with it. The only Patras is dry excuse me, only Patras is dry for Roditis, uh, which are the best wines from high on the slopes, sort of. Uh, you also find Mavrodaphne of Patras, created by Achaia Klaus in 1861. Uh, Gustav Klaus spent time in the Douro before starting the estate. So here are your minimum 51% Mavrodaphne plus Corinthiaki. Uh, best producers typically skip the Corinthiaki. It's always fortified, though it occurs at different times. Um, you could fortify it early like you would Vindu Natural or simply by blending with unfermented must um, a la Mastel. There are some aging requirements to it as well. It's got to be 12 months in oak, although you see extended aging labeling here. Uh, reserve 36, VL 60, ground reserve 84, and it can be vintage or non-vintage. I think we've got a question. Let's see what it is. Okay. Uh, the Musket of Patras and Rio Patras are both 100% Muscat Blanc, a Petit Grand. Uh, Musket of Patras on clay blaze, excuse me, clay based soils, producing richer styles at lower elevations. Rio Patras is closer to the coast and has a milder climate for more high toned floral wines. Both may be made three ways fortification prior to fermentation, Vinda Liqueur. <clears throat> fortification after some fermentation, Vinda Naturale, or by vinifying dry fruit. If they are Vinda Naturale and from select vineyards, they can then be labeled as Grand Cru. The Alia district southwest of Achaia is home to Domain Mercury, famous for Rafasco and international blending. Laconia district in the southeast of the peninsula, home of Sparta, uh, once the source of Malvasia. Here you'll find Malvasia, uh, excuse me, Monavasia Malvasia. For a minimum 51% Monobasia with a Sirtico, a Sprutus, Ketonitsa, it's gotta be tried. <clears throat> Fortification is optional. It's aged 24 months in barrel, single vintage uh, or multi-vintage, and it's somewhere between sea level and 500 meters. All right, that's Peloponnese. I think we're gonna look at the Aegean Islands next. Let's make sure, Ionian, perfect, glad I did that. So we'll zoom in on those. And you can see, pretty simple here. We talked about Zekinthos. We're gonna really focus on Kefalonia. 
So this is the west coast of the mainland. Uh, it's a southern continuation of the Adriatic Sea. There's a lot of rainfall causing fungal infections, milder Mediterranean. Never really fell under Ottoman control. It was instead ruled by the Venetians, if you recall. There's seven main islands, four that are significant for viticulture. Um, and Kefalonia, again, is the most important. It had a devastating uh, earthquake in 1953 that really damaged viticulture. The dry whites of Rebola of Kefalonia are elegant, refreshing. Um, 50 plus meters elevation of the best wines are 400 to 850 meters on the rocky Mount Enos. 85% um, produced by cooperative of Kefalonia Rebola producers. So a he heavy dose of uh, cooperative still in the islands. <clears throat> Musket of Kefalonia on the west end of the island is 100% Muscat Blanc in three styles. It can be Vindu, Vindu Naturel. Again, can be labeled as Grand Cru from select vineyards at higher ripeness and less than half the yields. And then Vindu Naturel, excuse me, Vin Naturel Amount Du from anywhere zero to 200 meters in elevation. You also get Mavrodaphne of Kefalonia from heavier clay-based soils. Uh, the Sigalo clone is required and provides really great wines. Must be fortified uh, to be PDO, uh, the no specific method. And then Zaginthos and that southern island, home of Verdea, the only other Greek PGI beyond Retsina for at least 50% Scatapulo. Uh, next, we'll take a look in here closer to the Aegean islands. And these are probably the more, uh, well, definitely more quality driven uh, island wines of Greece. Uh, we'll talk, take a look at Candia and all of its ones. Petza might be one of the more important ones, Daphne as well. Of course, we'll take a look at Santorini uh, in depth. You can see the Dodecanese Islands here that came in late uh, to Greece and the Cyclades over here. And then Samos in the north, which of course um, is Muscat, but doesn't say Muscat on it. It's the only one, stand out. So the four major grouping of islands, the Cyclades, the Dodecanese, uh, North Aegean, and the Sporades. The Cyclades and the South Aegean are just north of Crete with 33 major islands. Um, Santorini and Paros are the most important viticulturally. Winds here can interfere with fruit set in the spring and enhance water stress um, throughout the year, especially in the Meltemi vintages in late summer. Uh, you have super poor soils that lack in clay um, thus, there's no phylloxera, which has made it, made it to the island yet. <clears throat> Mostly a Sirtico and Monambasia for white and Mandelaria for red. The Santorini PDO <clears throat> was a 17th century eruption, wiped out the Minoan civilization. You have a still active volcano that erupted in the 1950s, uh, named for uh, St. Irene. Again, we mentioned that incredibly poor volcanic soil named Aspa. You can't even get olive trees to, to survive here. Uh, the Santo Co-op was really the sole producer until the 1947 vintage. Uh, Canavas, or smaller estates, then began to pepper the island. Argyros and Butari were among the first. And then Hatsdakis was Butari's winemaker before opening his own winery in 1996. And then, of course, recently passing away just a couple of years ago. Uh, Sigalus and Gaia came in the 1990s. Um, here you get some black soils tended by volcanic basalt that sits atop limestone and schist. Uh, there's no phylloxera, no rivers, no fresh water. The morning fog and the dew are the sole sources of moisture for much of the growing season. Uh, vines are trained in what they call kulara or stefani to catch the moisture and avoid the winds. These are the little basket vines. I probably should have put a picture on here for you all. I've also heard them referred to as geristry uh, in the volcanic wines book, although. Um, that's been unconfirmed from, from people. So I would stick to calling them Kulara uh, or Stefani. <clears throat> Everything really sits between zero and 300 meters of elevation. Of course, Sirtico is the most planted grape by far. Uh, Mandelaria and Mavrotragno for red, all extremely low yielding. Uh, we mentioned before that 75% for a Sirtico for dry whites and 51% for Vinsanto. There's also a style called Nicteri. Um, this is for late harvest that are picked at dawn and pressed within a day. They get three months barrel uh, requirement and they're aged under floor and they're freaking delicious. A little bit higher alcohol content, um, but still maintaining the acidity. And then Metza is a red dessert wine from dried Mandelaria grapes. Uh, it's a specialty of the area. On the island of Peros, the PDOs are Peros and Malbasia Peros. Um, here you'll find Mount Perfitus, the lone peak on a flat island over 750 meters. It's extremely hot and dry. It's less windy and humid than Santorini. 
You get fertile soils of loam, sand, limestone. Best sites kind of sit between 250 to 400 meters. Again, mid slope here. The Paros PDO is for dry whites from Monemvasia, and then dry reds from Mandelaria co-fermented with Monemvasia. It's the only red PDO that actually allows for a white grape. Malvasia Paros, uh, sweet wine made from sun-dried grapes, Monemvasia uh, with a little bit of a Sirtico. Fortifications optional. 24 months aged and vintage dated, may be labeled with four year average age of vintages if aged at least four years. Kind of difficult to understand how that goes, but uh, important to note. The Dodecanese, Rhodes is really the most important uh, island viticulturally. Here you've got Mount Aviros, uh, zero to 600 meters in elevation, sand, clay, limestone. Really rocky as you get to higher elevations. Uh, the rainfall here is scarce, but plenty of fresh water resources. <clears throat> and it is hot and dry. Sparkling wine is kind of common despite the weather. Um, Care is the main producer, a co-op founded in 1928. 2008 economic collapse really greatly affected this island, causing a lot of the producers to close. Uh, the Rhodes PDO um, is for Ethiri in the upper slopes, red, white, and rosé, dry to sweet. Uh, and then 70% Mandelaria for red and rosé. Muscat of Rhodes, 100% Muscat Blanc, Vendu, Vendu Naturel, again, maybe Grand Cru if sourced from select vineyards, and Vin Naturel Amant, Du. And the North Aegean, most sit closer to Turkey than they really do uh, mainland Greece. There's two PDOs per sweet Muscat. There's Limnos and Samos. Um, Samos, pirates ran off a lot of the islanders in the 15th century Ottoman rule, offered incentives for citizens to return. There was the arrival of phylloxera at the end of the 20th century that caused a shakeup in varietal composition, making really Muscat Blanc, or locally known as Muscato Aspro, more prevalent. Uh, the 1934 decree claiming that only Muscat Blanc may be labeled Samos, one of the first precursors to Greek wine law. Very steep slopes with granite soils. You'll find Mount Ampelos. This one has a pretty high range of uh, elevation from zero to 990 meters although the highest elevation vineyards tend to be the best. Only Muscat PDO does not include the name in the PDO. They're naturally sweet or fortified, fresh or sun-dried grapes. They can be VDN from select vineyards. Here it can be called Grand Cru. United Winemaking Agriculture is your co-op of Samos, and we mentioned that co-ops really got their start there in 1934 earlier. You'll also find Nectar as a, a Vin Natural Amant Dew. Um, aged in oak for 72 months, which again is fermentation without fortification. And then a simia, which is 60 months in oak, made by Vindu, unfermented must, is fortified. Uh, the island of Limnos, the origin of the Limnio grape, though it no longer plays a starring role here, the musket of Alexandria sort of takes center stage for sweet and dry. Um, Limnos PDO is dry red Limnio, along with dry, uh, semi sweet, uh, excuse me, semi dry and sweet muscat. Uh, slopes of Ambelos PGI is great for dry muscat. Uh, and then you get muscat of Lemnos, dried or fortified wines from select vineyards, again, can be labeled as Grand Cru. Hot, dry, flat, volcanic soils with limestone, mostly on the cooler western end from zero to 300 meters. Uh, in the south of Asian, you find Crete. And this is really where the story of Greek wine begins when the Minoans uh, developed viticulture. The Venetian rule from that 12th to 17th century created that auspicious spread of viticulture. The Ottoman rule later then sort of doused the flames of that. Uh, Malvasia wines were the top priority for the Venetians <clears throat> and were recently given two PDOs, Malvasia of Candia and Malvasia of Citia. <clears throat> Six co-ops really dominated from the 50s to 90s uh, when boutique production began to rise. You get the obscure Cretan grapes are making a comeback here. Leotico, Daphne, Plito, Villana, Vidiano, it's about 159 miles wide and 37 from the north to the south. Here you have the Aegean and the Libyan seas. Uh, there's a large range that runs east to west. Its three highest peaks are here, Siloritus, Lefkaori, and Dikti, and they block the hot African winds, giving the island two distinct climates. Viticulture is really confined to the north. The best sites are along the higher slopes with cooler temps and rainfall in the west and you'll find limestone and clay soils. Four districts from west to east, Ania, Rathimno, Iraklio, excuse me, and Lasiti. Um, Iraklio contains five of the seven PDOs, mountainous between Siloritis and Dikti, 
Uh, but the Pets of PDO is probably the most regarded. Here you'll find that dry Vilana, reds are Cotsifalia and Mandalaria, uh, three to 800 meters in elevation, sandier at higher elevations. Uh, arcane PDO for dry reds from Cotsifali and Mandalaria from three to 450 meters. And then the Daphne PDO for Leotico, um, 150 to 600 meters in deeper clay soils. Um, really, from those districts, Hania has the most rainfall and the coolest temps, so the fewest vineyards over 500 meters. Um, and then Lasithi, those separately planted, excuse me, sparsely planted, contains two PDOs, Sitia and Malvasia Sitia. These are the highest limestone content on all of Crete. They sort of sit between 250 to 650 meters. Um, Sitia PDO is for dry whites of Ilana and Thropsathiri and reds of Leotico and Mandalaria. Sweets from multiple styles, unfortified dried grapes uh, with 100% Leotico. Uh, Malvasia Sitia are sweet whites that are Vindu Natural uh, or Vin Natural Amant Du for Assyrtico, Ethiri, Vidiano, uh, Thraps Ethiri, Leotico, plus Malvasia de Candia Aromatico and Muscat Blanc, which is the same as Muscat, excuse me, Malvasia Candia. Uh, and only two wines of Greece that actually utilize Malvasia are here. On their 330 to 750 meters in elevation, typically. A um, couple of things as far as terminology is concerned, you might just want to be aware of. Uh, Inahus, which were in charge of blending wine and water during symposia um, to get people to stoke discussion, sort of maybe the first sommeliers, right? Uh, Esprutus is a generic term for unknown white grapes. Cava, spelled C A V A, for PGI of varietal wines only. This is a minimum of oak aging. For white and rosé, it's 12 months with six and oak. And then for reds, it's 36 months with 12 and oak. Grand Reserva, this is uh, PDO only, white wines uh, with 12 months uh, aging, six and oak, no larger than 600 liter barrels. Uh, and then for reds, it moves to 48 and 18, with 18 in bottle. Uh, Kulara or Stefani, we mentioned earlier as being basket training in Santorini. Uh, Katima means estate. Mavrudi is an excuse me, indigenous variety, but also an unknown red grape. Another aging one uh, you might see is called Paleomeno Sivarelli. Uh, this is just extended aging, oak aging beyond the minimum requirement of that particular PDO or PGI. And then Reserve, which is PDO only for 12 months um, of aging, six in barrel and three months in bottle for white, 24 months of aging, 12 months in barrel and six uh, in bottle for red. Food pairing, eat seafood with it. Uh, we mentioned a, a ton of different producers, but I think it's important to point out Butari being established in the 19th century, um, establishing several satellite winer, wineries in Greece's major appellations. Um, so you're, you're sort of big producer, Butari, Akai Klaus, Kambas, Kurtaki, Santali, Portakaris, which established in 1970 among the quality focused producers in the 70s when the wine balls were really react, enacted, excuse me. So lots to take in. Um, I might recommend, I know that we powered through all of Greece in one setting today. I might recommend for those of you that are actually studying to break it up. I would study, you know, mainland Greece with Oregon, um, just to sort of have things broken up for you a little bit. Um, study the Aegean island, islands whenever you're studying something from Spain. Um, so just to keep yourself uh, from confusing different regions because the language for me is, is a little bit different. Um, and I don't understand it as well. Uh, that was a really deep dive. I think we can also just sort of take some highlights from each of those regions and make sure to pay attention to them. Make sure that you know, uh, you know, Nausa, Amenteo, Kumanisa, and Slopes of Meloton are in Macedonia. Make sure that you're familiar with Rapsani and Nemea. Uh, make sure that you know where Santorini is, the soil types of them, the grape varieties, and you should be just fine. Uh, this presentation was to give you a much deeper understanding of why these grapes function the way they do throughout the country. So I hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back uh, next week. We'll take a, a look at the syllabus and, and get fired up next Sunday at 1030 Central Time once again. Thanks for joining us, gang. Thanks, buddy.